Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the revised GRE. We have already solved every single math problem from this book that I'm holding in my hand, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you solve every single problem from it. If there is a problem that gives you trouble, that, you, that gives you difficulty, if you're interested in watching the solution to any of the math problem from this book, you will find the solutions to all of the problems from day number 251 through 400. This book contains math problems that are almost all the same, all of them the same as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE on the same page number as a matter of fact, there with, with, the, with the few exceptions. If you're interested in watching the original solutions to problems, you will find the original solutions for day number 1 through 250. Original solutions were done at a little bit of a slower pace, uh, in a little bit, of, a little bit, in a little bit more detail. So if you're interested in watching the original solution, you will find it from day number 1 through 250, as I just said. Right now, we are solving the problems from this book here, the general, uh, GRE general test, the 10th edition, the old book here. We are doing quantitative comparison questions from this book because the newer, newer editions do not have enough quantitative comparison questions in the revised GRE, but the quantitative comparison questions are very important questions. A lot of the people have difficulty with them because these are not the sort of questions we come across in our uh, usual day-to-day -day daily schooling. So we are doing the problems from this book. We are on page number 124, very first problem on the page, number 11. Let's take a look at it. We are told that we have two triangles, triangle T1 and T2. We are also told that they have equal areas. We are told that triangle T1 has the height of H1, triangle T2 has the height of H2. Let's see what they are, let's see what they want us to compare. Let's see, let's see what are the two quantities they want us to compare. In column number one, we are asked to compare the area of T1, the area of T1, area of triangle T1 over the height of the triangle T1, the ratio of the area to the height versus the area of the second triangle, of course, T2, and its height. So essentially we are being asked to compare the ratio of the, the ratio of the area to the height of the two triangles. So the very first thing we have to we have to notice here is the fact that we already know that the area of T1 and area of T2 they are equal. We are told that so this quantity, whatever this quantity is, is the same quantity as this quantity. So it plays no role. It plays no role. For example, if somebody were to ask us how much is 5 over x versus 5 over 5 over y, well the 5 plays no role. Essentially what we are being asked to compare here is 1 over x versus 1 over y. Because it's the same 5 we could multiply, rather we could divide both, we could divide both columns by 5, we could divide both columns by 5 and get rid of the 5. And of course we can multiply and divide both columns by any number that you want at all as long as the number that you're multiplying both columns by is a positive number. We cannot multiply by a negative number because negative number will change the direction of the inequality. Do you understand? So that's what it is. The area of the two triangles play no role. So what they're asking here is to, what, what they're asking here is to compare the, the ratio of the, or, or compare the reciprocal of the height of the first triangle versus the reciprocal of the height of the second triangle, which is same as comparing their height. So essentially they want us to compare the height of the two triangles without telling us anything at all about the triangles. For example, just to give you an example, just to make you understand here, say for, say for example, we may have a triangle like this with a height of 2 and the, and, and, and the base of 10. And here we may have a triangle with a height of 10 and a base of 2. So if this happens to be the height here too, we'll have 1 over 2 which is half versus 1 over 10. We'll have, here we will have 1 over 10 versus 1 over 2 or rather, the height here is 2 here, the height, height of the first triangle is 2, so we'll have 1 over 2 versus 1 over 10 here, in this case the answer would be A. So then what is the problem here? The problem here is that we don't know which one is T1 and which one is T2. We, we do not, we cannot tell which one they're calling T1 and which one they're calling T2, for all we know, for all we know, it could be the other way around. It could be the other way around. We could just, we could just, we could have just as well drawn this triangle on this side and drawn this triangle on that side. In which case, the answer would turn out to be B. I'm making too much fuss about it. You understand what I'm, what we're talking about here. 
we do not know anything at all about the triangle, how can we compare their heights? If I, if I come up to you and simply tell you that I have two triangles whose area happens to be the same, but just because their area is the same, I cannot tell you what, the, what their heights are going to be like. It's impossible because we know nothing about the base. So the answer is D. The answer is D. Let's do the next one. Number 12. 59% of people got it right. 41% 41% of the people managed to muck it up. Muck it up with the letter M, not an F. Let's do the next one. Number 12. Number 12 is a straightforward numerical problem. About two thirds of the people got it right, and the question is this. We are told this is how the question appears. Three, this is how it appears. I'm going to write down exactly the way it appeared in the exam. Versus 1 over 2 raised to third power. 1 over 2 raised to third power, half raised to third power. Well, let's see what we can do here. Of course, we understand that when they put the dots here like this, what they're trying to tell you here is that this is 3 times 3 times 3 versus 6 times 6 uh, over 6 times 6 times 6, which can be written as 3 over 6 times 3 over 6 times 3 over 6. And 3 over 6 is half, so this is half times half times half, which of course half times half times half, of course, is simply half raised to the third power which is exactly what we have here. The answer is C. The answer to this problem is C. Do not waste your time doing everything out. That's where people spend their time. That's where they, that's what they're, that is the part that most people do not understand. These questions are called quantitative comparison, which is why I make a point of writing down the word computation and I cross it out for emphasis. These questions are not called quantitative computation. Do not waste your time computing every bloody thing that you see there. Compare the bloody things. Do you understand? Let's do the next one. Number 13. Number 13. Number 13, the geometry problem. Forty-seven percent of the people got this one right. Majority of them missed it. We are told that the area of the circle with center P equals sixteen pi. So here is our circle. Here is the center P, and this is what we are told. A line goes across it, which they are calling A to B. And of course, as we can see right away, because of the fact because of the fact that this line goes across the circle through, cent through the center, this line AB is a diameter. Just a quick digression here, just a quick digression. What do we call a line that does not go through center? This line is called a core. We are not dealing with a core, we are dealing with a, di uh, we are dealing with a diameter. It was just a quick digression here, just to remind us of the terminology, because we have to know this terminology for the exam, otherwise if we see the word code, we might get confused. Let's see what they're asking us to compare. They're asking us to compare x versus 4. And here's the triangle that is given to us. We are told that this is right angle. This is, we are told this x, and this is x. And that's all, x versus, x versus, Four. Let's see what we can do here. This is point C. This this is point C. As we can see here, as we can see here, the triangle ABC is a right angle triangle because they tell us right there. They tell us that it's a right angle. They tell us that it's a right angle triangle right here. This is 90 degrees. If it's a right angle triangle, then the side facing the right angle is the hypotenuse. A to B is the hypotenuse. But A to B, we also know, is the diameter. If we can somehow figure out the length of this diameter, we can figure out the x's by simply using the Pythagorean theorem. The question is, how do we go? How do we go about figuring out the length of the diameter? But that part will come from this information. We know 
that the area, we know that the area is 16 pi. How does one find the area of a circle? The area of the circle is pi r squared. And pi r squared, we are told, is 16 pi. Well, that makes life, that makes life easy, doesn't it? Divide both sides by pi. And, it, and as soon as we divide both sides by pi, we cannot leave the a there anymore because it's no longer equal to area. Divide both sides by pi, and we end up that we end up finding that r squared equals 16. If r squared equals 16, then r is 4. So x. So this is 4, and this is 4, which means the diameter from a to b is 8. Now we can do the rest. Now we can do the rest here. Right here we can do the rest here. Here is our here is our diameter a to b which is 8 and this is x and this is x. Of course these two sides, these two sides would have to be equal. Actually they would not have to be equal. We are told that they are equal. We are told that they are equal. Sorry, they do not have to be equal. It's an isosceles triangle we are told. Uh, because this side from a to c and b to c, for a second I, I lost track, uh, track of my thoughts and I lost my concentration and I thought that these were the radii, the radiuses, they are not the radii. These two sides do not have to be equal to each other. We are told that they are equal. It's an isosceles triangle. Since they are, it's an isosceles triangle, the rest is very simple. So we find that 8 squared, the hypotenuse is squared, equals x squared plus x squared, which means 2x squared has to equal 8 squared, which is 64. So 64 equals 2x squared, which means that x squared must equal 32, and therefore x equals the root of 32. So x equals root of 32. Now what are we going to do with that? Knowing that x equals root of 32, what can we do with it? We have to figure out how does it compare with 4. Now, how are we going to figure out the root of 32? How are we, how are we going to figure out, how are we going to compare, compute the root of 32? That is the whole bloody point. We don't have to compute anything. These questions are not called quantitative computation, these are called quantitative comparison. All we have to realize the root of 32, whatever it is, is more than 4. How do, we know, how do we know it's more than 4? Because of course the root of 16 is 4. So if the root of 16 is 4, then root of 32, whatever the hell it is, is more than 4. So this quantity is more than 4. We are being asked to compare it against 4. Therefore the answer is A. What the root of 32 actually is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No. Even if they had put down, instead of 4 in the second column, even if they had put down 5, the answer still would have been A. Because... 5 versus root of 32, we know root of 25 is 5, so root of 32 is more than 5. If they had put down 6 here, then of course the story will change, but they wouldn't do that. Why did they put down 4 and not 5? Because they put down 4 because they want, to, they want you to make some connection here between this 4 and that 4, and that's all. They're trying to confuse it, that's all. And I said 47% of people had no trouble with it whatsoever. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow we'll do the last two problems in the series in the first exam. They come in a series of 15. They come in a series of 15, the first 5 are easy, the next 5 are medium, 6, six through 10 are medium, and 11 through 15 are hard. This is the old exam, you understand? The new exam, they are not arranged in the order of difficulty. In the new exam, it's not a, it's not a paper and pencil exam, it's a compu computer exam, it's a computer adaptive exam. But these questions are coming from the old format of the exam, when the exam many, many moons ago used to be given in the paper and pencil format. In the paper and pencil format, they, all, they were arranged in the order of difficulty. And they are in the series of 15, 1 through 15, easy to the hard, to hard. Tomorrow we'll do question number 14 and 15, the last two in the series, okay? Bye now.